So, this is um, what, who makes this dress? Donna Morgan dress, 170 bucks. DJ Booth is gonna be in Vegas. <laughs> Wait, are you going to be in Vegas too? Yes. Yes. Doing the Schmurda dance? Schmurda, yeah. That's Schmurda, Schmurda. Oh, that's Bobby Schmurda. The dance is Schmurda. I can't keep up. It's the first dance I could actually do though, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to death. <laughs> oh. Those are good flats. Did you notice that the flats actually match the spikes in the earrings? Attention to detail. Susan Lucci Ooh. is a good guest. She's been here several times before. That was my first time meeting her daughter. The cake was good. That's the kind of thing I could make myself. There's something intimidating about having to pull out a beater and, you know, bake that way. I'm ordering a gyro. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Um, you guys were really good with the questions. Let me see these questions. You asked me a lot of really good questions. Um, you know, I requested you to ask questions other than rutabaga. <laughs> what does that mean? Other stuff. And you were really good. A lot of young people in college want to know how to get started with their lives and their careers and stuff, I always say you should enter college knowing what you want to do. That thing about an undeclared major, that, uh, maybe you can do that, <clears throat> you know, if money grows on trees in the back of your house. Enjoy lunch. <laughs> you know what I mean? 145. Mm. Right on time, Thank 145 you, today. All my reading when, when we get on the airplane. Yep, going back out of town. I have to go, I have to go to... Los Angeles. I'm going to be speaking at a women's empowerment. I've told you I do that from time to time. Women's empowerment on Saturday and Friday. I have a whole schedule full of stuff, including um, I'm going to Big Boy. I'm going to Big Boy's Neighborhood. That's a radio show. And I'll be going to do the Insider and whatnot. I'm promoting our show, but I'm also promoting the Aaliyah movie and um, my comedy, Lipstick. Thank you, Elvis Duran. You know I love Hermes. So sweet, thoughtful, thanks. I do appreciate it. All right, let's get to your questions. Oh my gosh, it feels so good in here. It was so cold out there. Um, Mel says, <clears throat> Wendy, I'm in love with my ex and I found out a couple of months ago that the feeling is mutual. I've been with someone else for four years, but I get up every morning with my ex on my mind. I think about him even when I'm having sex with my current partner. Miss Wendy, how do I get over that man? Please help. Well, he's an ex for a reason. Doesn't mean he hasn't bettered himself since breaking up. You said that he has the same feelings for you. So you're in a relationship with a man for four years. Do you have children together? Because oftentimes people fail to say the most important thing, which is that he's not just my boyfriend, but um, you know, he's my, the father of my child. Either way, I think you need to assess whether it's worthwhile and you know, releasing this man who you're in a relationship with now and getting together with your ex. Because if your ex was a chronic cheat or a chronic drug abuser or chronically getting fired, you know, is this a healthy relationship to get back into? Listen, this is why they call it falling in love because we all turn stupid in terms of some of the, the decisions that we make. So I can't help you get over him. But I can suggest you might want to get back with him. Oh, it's horrible. I don't know an ex that I'd want to get back with. When I'm done with you, I'm done. I burn you down, throw your gifts, like I'm done. Not, there's not one ex in my life. 
that I would ever get back with. None. When you are an ex, you are an ex. But good luck, Mel. What a situation. Dear Wendy, uh, this is from the mystery book. Dear Wendy, I mean, hey, Wendy. Uh, my best friend just told me that she wants to take a friendship break because her boyfriend doesn't like me. This sounds like a young person right here. This sounds like somebody young. Um, she's my best friend. I share a lot with her. I know she feels the same way. What, what would you do? Um, first of all, I've been that girl, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going to say this right off the bat. Um, my girlfriends have always had to take the back seat to boys. It's, that's just the way it is. Some girls are like that. Did I ever tell you that I have two of these rings? One is real and one is fake. Can you tell which one is which? The only way I can tell is because the real one has gravy in it. <laughs> I still haven't cleaned the gravy out of the diamond. It's my good luck ring, so the reason why I have two, I keep the real one um, at home and I leave the fake one here in my office. But since I'm traveling, I wear the, oh hell, back to your problems. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I've been that girl, you know, sorry. You know, having a career and having a family have always been priority to me. And, um, you know, I wasn't that girl in, in high school or college, you know, I had time for everybody. But once I took on a career and everything, look, my girlfriends cannot spoon me at night. Um, in addition, I've become such an intensely private, personal person. There's very little I will tell a girlfriend in terms of secrets and how to solve problems and, and, or how to, how to help me solve problems and stuff. So um, she puts you on the back burner. Call her, call her on it. I have friends who've called me on it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm dating this new guy, and I really like him. 20 years later, he's my husband. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was time well invested. <laughs> uh, and, then you, and then when you have kids... You have even less time. I don't know. It's one of the fascinations um, to me of that show, Sex in the City, is that the girls have, all four of them, a deeply intense relationship with one another. And in real life, your real husband would take up a whole lot more time. Does that make sense, Tristan? Yeah. The girls are going to call me on this. Does Margo have girls sitting up in your house all the time? No, she has a close group of friends that she's been friends with since college. Uh-huh, uh -huh. You know, one lives in California, one lives in Chicago. Yeah, but they're But not... they're always, like, texting or... Yeah, but they're not up under you. No, 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 no. no. They don't take Tristan time. Nope. Anyway, um, I would call your friend on it, though, and let her know that that you don't particularly care for it. She's still gonna do what she's going to do. Um, Marquita B. By the way, and there's nothing wrong with staying friends with her. It's just that you have to understand that she's not always going to be there for you because she puts boys before you. Marquita B says, hi Wendy, you're like an auntie in my head. My older sister passed away at 31 from heart failure in 2012. She had a husband and two children, my sweet niece and nephew. Now her husband has a girlfriend and it seems pretty serious. However, he's been telling my niece to lie to us about her, but he doesn't want to come out and tell us herself, himself. How do we confront him about it or should we just wait for him to tell us? Thank you and I love you. Wait for him to tell you. Uh, because he was married to your sister, so he probably wants to, I mean, you say, according to your niece, that it seems to be getting serious. He might not want to bring her around or tell you that it's getting serious until it's serious, according to him. You know, he didn't divorce your sister. She passed away. He didn't want to lose her. Um, you know, she was taken from him. So... I wouldn't say anything. I would, not yet. I wouldn't say anything. Um, Alicia R. says, Wendy, 
After having my daughter, my husband and I thought it would be best for me to stay at home with her, but now we're having some financial issues. All of our family, friends, family slash friends work and I don't feel comfortable with daycare, but I have to get back to work. Do you think I should get over my uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortably, uncomfortability <laughs> with daycare or ask my husband to take a second job? Thank you very much. I think you should get over being uncomfortable with daycare. Then again, you're asking a woman who put her son in daycare at three months. <laughs> Don't call the cops. He turned out okay. <laughs> no, we put him in the Goddard school at three months. I was ready to go back to work. And, and we are a two working income household. Um, you could ask your husband to get a second job. And I get that you don't feel comfortable with daycare. Seems to me that you also feel left out of the loop. You said all your uh, friends and family work. So you're, you're feeling left out. Like you want to be a worker also. I'd start researching daycares and really do diligence. And um, I mean, I was in daycare. My mom went back to work. My brother, my sister. Was your mom a stay at home mom? For the first part of my life, yeah. Oh, you? white privilege. <laughs> no, how old were you when she went back to work? Um, probably was in like second or third grade. So you were still really young though. Yeah. But you were in school all day, so she yeah. could work. Yeah, Alice, I would um, talk to your husband about getting a second job, but I would also start looking for a job yourself so your husband won't have to get that second job. And I would definitely research daycare. Good luck. It's the last one. Oh, that was the last one? Yeah. Oh. We'll get more. We'll, we'll continue this line of questions and answers tomorrow for the after show. In the meantime, I'm going to take my stuff off, put my robe on, and clear off my desk and prepare for my gyro. You know what? I'm not going to get a gyro. I never... Rhonda! Uh, Rhonda? I'll text her for you. Yeah, I want a gyro from the gyro store. A loaded gyro. Gyro. Love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on The After Show. <laughs> oh my god. I had such a good time today. Take one of these. When I pass it, boo! Wait, come here. Uh, can we get more Diana Ross? Like, I really, like, I haven't heard the voice in so long, and all of a sudden you played it, but we had to stop because we were coming back. Gotcha. And remember. No. no what's that song called? What, Coco? No Coco. <laughs> now, I like the song like everybody else, but I like it in the club when it's dim. I don't need to be hearing it in front of my nice co-host and look in the audience and see them ratcheting out by singing it. Uh, no Coco. No Coco. <laughs> Although they do know the words. It's just a little embarrassing though, do you know what I mean? It's immature. It, it, I mean, not out it's here. Not, no, it's not the place for it. It's not, no, no. no, no. But all kind of ratchetness goes on, look. <laughs> we came, we were in the middle of commercial, and so Brendan goes, he goes to me, I swear it's like the gong show in here. <laughs> But you know what? That's a perfect description. Right, Tristan? <laughs> Sums it up. Yeah, yeah it's like it's a gun. everything. This it, is there, everything going on. It, there is a freak show, and I am the ringmaster. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. <laughs> chucky, chucky, chucky. Yeah, but you know what? Let's make a deal. It, it, it all starts, though, I think, with every single person that works here has a tick. Look at Joni. Mm -hmm. I let my hair out the box. Her, her hair is back. She's got her own ticky personality. Look at Willie uh -oh, skipping away. Uh -oh. <laughs> We haven't turned the character on Tristan, but or the camera, but you know he's got his ways about him. You know Suzanne and Brendan have their ways. Everybody else knows they do too. Everybody's got that's, everybody's got something going on here, but you know what? Something is good, and somehow we we've made this mess work for six seasons. It's, it's like, a mess. It's like the We Are the World video. Yeah. <laughs> bye, crazies. Bye. <laughs> they said bye. Yeah. Rude Vega. 
Walking, walking, walking. Oh, go get the bag in the back. Fast. French onion dip? Puts you well, Pops. You don't like those? I'm not into them. Really? Here. Oh, thank you. So date your kids with them. You know what I mean? I'll get out of the doghouse with these tonight. Twix. Do you like Three Musketeers? No. Me I like, neither. I like nuts in my chocolate. Yeah, I'm not. Do you like Three Musketeers, Tristan? No. No, they're too. Never yeah. have. Yeah, I don't get with the marshmallow thing. No. The nougat. The hamburger rolls. I don't know how this. Snickers. Do you want some dark chocolate? Oh. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> this looks expensive, so I don't want it, but I'll hold on to it. Margo likes it. Oh, she does? Here. Are you going to tell her that that you bought it for her, that I gave it to you to give to her? I'll tell her you gave it to her. She'll like that. Who's gambling? <laughs> <laughs> the knuckleheads. More crazies. <laughs> I think we're weird. This yeah. crew that sits right there is the weird S. Thank you, boss. We'll see you Thursday. The car's here? Thanks. Sure. We're going to Queens. You want to ride? Goodbye, after show. Yeah. Do you want some expensive chocolate from expensive land? Oh wait, I just gave it away. What did I do with the chocolate? You gave it to me. Oh, I gave it to Tristan. Well, give I, it back. I Twix. Well, no, I like Twix, oh, but I don't need the calories. <laughs> Would you like some French onion dip? No, thank you. Willie, you're a bachelor. No, thank you. Or a bachelorette. <laughs> but. No, thank you. Are you sure? Positive. It's French. It's French, <laughs> right? You were just there. You have a French fat lip. <laughs> okay, well, look, fine. you know Thank what we're saved this for? If the power ever goes out and we're locked in the building, okay. That, yep, then we're going to eat that. Let and we're also, the, we're also, no, you don't put it in the fridge. It's good until August 11th of 15. Mm -hmm. So if the power ever goes out and we're locked in the building, Tristan, you know, this is New York. Anything yeah, can happen. So if we were forced to eat one another, one person, who would we eat? You. You got the most meat. <laughs> you. You can feed the whole show. And then I got. I got that bottle. Meat? I got that bottle. A little, a little tainted. I've got that bottle of Jameson back there. Why do you think I keep the Jameson in my to office? Cure the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Such a quick wit. At least we have some meat and not just bones. Well, okay. Don't, don't be mad. Jerk bones. Don't be mad. Anyway, the point is, is that you just can't take it, Peter. Is that here, here in New York, and I don't know where you live, but here in New York, it's always very important to have water and snacks. Seriously, what did you say, Tristan? Yeah, that's anywhere. No, I know, but people don't think that way. People think that because they live someplace that maybe hasn't been affected by terrorism. Oh, yeah, you know, there are a lot yeah. of people watching right now. You know, you live in your your beautiful towns, maybe a small town, not a big city, and you feel as though there's nothing to worry about. Although you guys have the UFOs. And the, yeah, you, you have the office. Yeah. Anyway, I got a whole stockpile full of stuff. I got, I have oatmeal, and I always keep forks, and I always keep some chips around, hot sauce, so I don't go crazy. I have my bottle of Jameson over there. Um, upstairs, there's a fully stocked bar, including brown juice. <laughs> um, um, I'll just add, add to my uh, emergency. We've got good shoes in case we have to run. I got my medication. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, you know what? I often think about that. Like, I need my thyroid pills. I kill everybody in here if, if, if I run out. If you run out of your medication. Mm -hmm. See, people don't think about stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, if you have asthma, you need extra inhalers around. Otherwise, what's the point in having the food if you can't breathe? <laughs> For me, I mean, <laughs> thought if, as, as diseases go, thyroid is not as serious as a lot of diseases, but I can tell you right now, my expressive eyes, which is what I call them, uh, from my thyroid slash Graves disease, uh, if I don't take my meds, my eyes would be popped out of my head and rolled onto the floor with expressiveness. Then we'll eat them too. <laughs> right? <laughs> eat them along with, along with wig. <laughs> Are we done here with this one? Um, yeah, no, we're done. Okay, can you just unzip my zipper please don't oftentimes they leave me trapped in my dresses and I'm standing like now what do I do right. <laughs> all right so I love you for watching the, where are you going him 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 where are you going you, where's your coat that's why I asked it oh it's in your office Can't touch me either. Willie where are you going Back to my okay Right answer.
<laughs> Correct. <Ooh. laughs> He's a taskmaster. And uh, yeah, I've got to go home as well. Um, I had delightful time with Angela. Angela Bassett is, you know what? You know what's better than a pretty woman? Even more exciting is a pretty woman with a funny bone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't all stuck up. And you know what? She's young with her navel showing and like stuff. That song. Well, she's a Leo. You know how we You know what she like? Right? Yeah, she likes that song. She I don't. I don't give a about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. We played it going into commercial. You didn't hear it because the commercials were playing, and we played that song, and she started snapping her neck, and we were taking pictures together, and she was snapping her. She said, "I love this song, Wendy. When I first heard the song, I couldn't stand it, and, but now it's like I don't give a. I don't give a. <laughs> and she started singing. But that's you know what. Welcome to the new age of what being in your 50s is. You know, it's no longer, Wendy, pull your dress down. Angela Bassett had full navel showing, and I applaud that. And she likes Big Sean. Little Sean, Big Sean. Anyway, um, so some of you all need to, some of the older people watching need to stop being so old and open your mind to new things. Although, that does... Um, how how you dress and act a lot of times is predicated on your career of choice. Like I don't want to see my attorney defending me from going to jail with a belly button out, nor do I want to see suit. her and, or a cat suit. Nor do I want to see her in a too short DVF dress. You know what I mean. <laughs> but but uh, with that in mind, oh. Let's deal with that. Okay. All right, you just told me eyeballing yes, stuff. Yes, and the work day is done. Okay, the work day is done. All right, well, look, um, in conclusion, we Left have our emergency run. food. <laughs> we have enough food to keep us good until we're rescued. Until we, uh, and that's after we've eaten Antoine. Yeah, after we've eaten Antoine. And I've got some beef jerky also, lots of it. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Beef jerky. <laughs> and on that note, you can always ask for soy sauce. We got the chopsticks. With the chopsticks? <laughs> he's calling you a <laughs> stick. <laughs> he's a top stick. Get it from the okay. wardrobe department. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Even security has their coats on. Okay. So clearly, I'm holding everyone up. All right. We I'll be right you. there. I love you for watching the after show. And thanks for key keying with us. And. Get your emergency, because um, you, you never, it, look, it's America 2015. It could pop off at any time, and you might be hungry. And don't forget to include a libation in there, too. You know, just to, just to make time fa fa pass faster. <laughs> All right, I love you for watching. Bye. Just tell them turn the music off for just a second. <laughs> 60 bucks for this dress. The belt, a couple of dollars, came, didn't come with the dress. And the shoes, J. Crew. I love wearing stuff that we can all get. Something that would make sense to all of us. You know? This is one of those, um, in my opinion, ageless dresses too. You know, some of you all say, dress your age. You dress your age. <laughs> no, it's not exactly comfortable. You know? <laughs> Comfort would be leggings and Uggs. Mm -hmm. Not a dress with a skinny belt where I've got to hold my stomach in the whole time. We make sure I'm sitting up straight so that the belt doesn't get lost in, 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 a, roll. in, in a roll <laughs> in lunchtime. Look how skinny the belt is. One wrong move with my posture and it disappears. No, nope. it even slides. What are you looking at? Oh, I'll take this bracelet. This, I love this bracelet. I love it every time I wear it. It's very substantial. It looks like a whole bunch of the same bracelet, but it's actually all attached. It's almost tribal-y. Depending on who wears it. Like if Erica Badu wore this, all of a sudden it'd be yeah, tribal. Uh, yeah. That's nice. We, we do have it in gold? <laughs> Shiny gold? Yeah. Wow. Right now. Who is back here trying to look 10 years younger? Secretly somebody euthanizing while the show's going. 10 years younger. 
Oh, it's makeup setting spray. That's why I look so young. <laughs> wow. A makeup setting spray. Secrets unfold. Yep. I didn't even know. Bye. Thanks, Joni. You too. I'm going to the mall. That's how I'm going to spend my Friday. Oh, brother. It's been a very long week. I've got to preserve all my energy. Thank God that cold is gone. I still have a little tick, but nothing that a full weekend in the house can't. Cure. When we get to the door, though, I have to go in by myself, if you don't mind. Thank you, and I love you for watching The After Show. Ow. <laughs> Bye. It's Norman's birthday. I was signing his card. I like my outfit. I forget who makes this blouse, but it's a good one. Yeah, you know what? It's still available. It, it's still available? About how much was it? I don't remember off here. Maybe like a hundred. About a hundred dollars, he said. And um, about a hundred dollars. But the thing is that I like is that there's no gapping. It actually fits me. And then the skirt is like a um, delicious wintry sweater from DVF, of course. She always gets it right. Oh, Magic Johnson. He was great. Love him. Yes. I could have talked to him more. Um, I feel honored to know him. Yeah. He's a legend. You know? He's a legend. His wife, Cookie's jeans, are pretty good. She sent me a whole box of them. She guessed my size through the TV and everything. It's always funny to me when people are able to guess my size through the TV <laughs> and, and, and send me something and it fits spot on. Um, and EJ, EJ got the um, intervention surgery, you know, and we showed, I don't know why we showed a larger picture of him, maybe we didn't have a smaller one, but you, the picture that we showed on the show with Magic standing with his son, that was an old picture because EJ has lost like three persons at this point. Um, looks terrific. So. And I'm excited for his reality show. Uh, those Ask Wendy girls. I mean, both of them. Oh, God. It's like you have to go for what you want in life. Thank you you cannot. Uh, you're welcome. Thank Great you. Job. Thanks, Brandon. Um, come on in. I have an interview. I have people coming in here. Uh-oh, take a little time to enjoy the view. Who's on the show today? Oh, Rosie Perez is back, or is this a rerun? No, she's back. She was back last week. She, no, she was back. Who else is? Uh, Nicole and Rosie O'Donnell. So Rosie O'Donnell's leaving at the end of this week. Um, in life, you've got to go for what you know. You know, and I'm sorry, I've never understood people that, like, are digging someone and they don't say something about it. And it's not that I'm this world-class extrovert or anything like that. It's just, oh God, I just, I, I've never understood that. I mean, even when I was in high school, although he did play me, even when I was a young girl, if, if there was a boy that I liked, within reason, I would let him know. There was this fella um, who went to, um, he went to Neptune High School and I was at Ocean Township High School and he was real cute and he was like brown skin, but his eyes were light and mesmerizing and hypnotizing and he was always real fashionable and I really liked him. So my parents sent me to Paris for a week while, you know, while I was in, with, the, with the French class, you know, the class trips, um, sent me to Paris. And while I was there, I used my non-job having high school girl money to buy him a polo shirt. Don't get random with me. I know what you're saying. Why would you go all the way to Paris 
to buy what you can buy at Macy's because I was 16, okay? But I bought it for him. I remember the it was lavender with a green polo pony. And I gave it to him. And he graciously took it. Uh, but didn't pay me dust. We never went on one date or anything. But that was my overture to let him know, you know, I really like you. And, you know, <laughs> I, I was in Paris. And I was thinking about you, so I got you something. Now, that might have been a little too forward, maybe. I don't know. All I know is... Bet you he wish he took that shirt now. <laughs> he got me a talk show. Um, I say all that to say, if there's somebody that you like within reason, um, go for it. Don't let four years pass like Fatima and ask Wendy today. And then he, now the boy is engaged to get married this summer and she's going to stand up and ask me, Wendy, what should I do? Sit down. Sit down. Four years you're with this guy, you never said a word? Please. Also, if a guy likes you enough, He'll say a word to you. He's not going to let four years pass without trying to feel you up. <laughs> and then the other girl, she's friends with a guy for, friends with benefits with a guy for two years. And she, he doesn't have a boy, a girlfriend or anything. And she's asking me, what should she do? I said, jump up and say something to him before you end up like Fatima. <laughs> All right, uh, Sarah, you're first up. Hello, Wendy. I'm from Australia, I'm 24, and I met my boyfriend when I was 15. We were together up until last year when I moved to Sydney from New Zealand for a job. Now see, I did not look at the map. I don't know how far one, is, is it like, um, are they like- Plane ride. A plane, a plane ride? Yeah. Is it a five hour plane ride? No, 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 but it's a plane ride. A little plane ride, okay. Um, oh, wait. She moved to New Zealand for a job. I still love him and I haven't even dated or looked at anyone because nobody compares. I know I should be dipping it and doing it, but do you think that maybe I just met my soulmate at 15? I don't want to regret things uh, this later in life, though. Thanks, Sarah. Um, no, you don't meet a soulmate at 15. You, you meet somebody that you like at 15 and you get back together when you're 28 or something and then you say, oh my gosh, not only were you my boyfriend at 15, but I can't believe how much we still have in common now. Sarah, it's time, it's time to zip it and do it. You're 24. I'm not accusing him of anything, but I bet you he's zipping it and doing it. And he might still have feelings for you and you can still have feelings for him. What goes on in New Zealand doesn't have to uh, translate back to Sydney. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, 24 years old. No, you, you have, you've got a lot of boys to date and have experiences with. That's how you find out what you actually like as a woman out of someone. And I know you said you like this guy, but you're not giving anybody else a chance. It's not healthy, okay, Sarah? Good luck, thank you. Pyle writes, Mrs. Hunter, I need your magical advice. <laughs> I'm 22 years old, I graduated from Pace University. I applied to Pace, yeah, and I got in. But it was too close to Jersey and I didn't want my parents flying in on their brooms, busting up my party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, from Pace, I graduated from Pace in May. Um, I still haven't found a job. I have six months of experience working in entertainment and six months in fashion, but finding a full-time job to get my marketing career going is so difficult, I'm getting frustrated. I really want to work. I like that. Not lazy. I really want to work and become uh, fully independent and not live off my parents anymore. What should I do? Pile in New Jersey. Pyle, I love that you really want to work. And people that really want to work uh, have their eye on the prize, which is a job in your career. But you need to apply for jobs everywhere. I don't care with pizza, um, a salesperson at a department store. If you don't want to live off your parents, and I love this because so many people sponge off their parents and lay around all day. I'm a go-getter also. And I will tell you, Go get money, but never lose. And I mean, and I mean, you apply at the pharmacy to be a cashier. You, you apply places. A apply to be a substitute teacher. You know, you don't need a teacher certificate for that, I don't believe. Because plenty of people have been sub-teachers. But you apply for a job that, that is going to give you some money right now. Fortunately, you still live with your parents. So you're not totally dependent on whatever this job is. And continue to um, apply for jobs in your marketing field. Do not let grass grow under your feet because now you're insurance salesman and the money is good. Your passion is in 
marketing. So never lose your passion and good luck. And thank you for calling me Mrs. Hunter Pyle. <laughs> I like your name. There are about a thousand jokes that I'm sure you've heard. Amy, I see you. I see you better now though. Amy, um, dear Wendy, I'm 21 years old and a college student. I recently got married. I recently got married to my life, to my, to the love of my life. He's older than me. But I wouldn't want it any other way. I'm always getting harassed and judged for being too young to be married. I'm happy with him. I wish people would back off. It's creating distance from the people I love. What do you think I should do to prove to people that I'm happier than I've ever been? First of all, you don't have to prove anything to me or anyone else. I'm judging also, all right? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer you with, um, with the truth, my truth. Uh, the truth is I think a 21-year-old is too young to be married. Tristan? 100%. And you're a college student and he's older <laughs> than you? Okay. Uh, first of all, if you're happy, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. I'll tell you what, if I was your mom and dad, <laughs> there'd be a strain if I was your sibling yeah we would be strained right now but I wouldn't count you out but you, there'd be a strain and as far as your friends yeah if I'm a 21 year old girl what the hell do I want to be friends with a tw another 21 who's married to an older man like we you're playing house and I'm getting housed that's the word we used to use in college when we party yeah, you're playing house and I'm getting house. I'm having the time of my life, the best four years ever in college, and you're settled down like an older woman. If you are serious about what you say, then you have no reason to prove nothing to no one. All right? Have a nice life, and I, and I wish you well. Although I still think you were too young to be getting to be married. Jason, are those, yes. are those my magazines? Yes, my name. Is, is 21-year-old a college student too young to be getting married? She's, already, she's married to an older man. In my opinion, yes. Your 20s for exploring and figuring out who you are. And dipping it and doing it! That's right! How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a poll. John, is 21 too... Yes. That's it. And if your friend was 21 and you were 21, wouldn't there be a strain between the two of you? Or you can't even be friends anymore. Like, what do you talk about? Yeah. All right, Amy, well, good. Don't do it. No, no, she's already married to an older man, and she's in college and wondering why her relationship with everyone else is strained. <laughs> but you be happy. I'm not trying to break up homes. Uh, you know, you, you be happy with your old man. Hey, the whispers, I got your flowers. Thank you, the whispers. Oh, my gosh. And before you go, Mr. Trump, Donald. You know I love a handwritten note on personalized stationery. He says, Wendy, so many people said they saw me on your show. Amazing. You are a real winner. Best wishes, Donald. Love it. And I save all my handwritten notes. Nice. You never know when this mess is going to end. And when it does, I want fond memories. Fortunately, everything lives on infamy on YouTube. All right, I think that's, that's all I wanted to cover with you today. Um, so I have an interview in here. I kind of wanted to change my clothes before the interview, but I guess I won't have a chance. So I'm talking to the, um, to Bloomberg. Not the mayor, though. Yeah, <laughs> not the mayor, the, the, um, the, uh, organization. Bloomberg Report, Bloomberg.com, Bloom, Bloomberg. All right, I love you for watching. I hope you've gotten a nice juicy after show. I'll see you tomorrow. Who's coming over tomorrow? All right, short. Martin Short will be here, and then Friday, Ricky Martin. Bye. Yes, that's Tristan. Hi, Tristan. Hi, Tristan. <laughs> I feel so fat. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on with my lower stomach. It's down here. Sick? I. You getting the flu? I'm fluish. I felt bad for my dentist because I felt it on, on, um, on my dentist day. I had a dentist appointment on Thursday, 7.30 at night.
but yeah, I had a weekly filling and I had to go. You know what I mean? But uh, can you imagine? <laughs> and as I'm driving to the dentist office, I'm just like, it's got to be the worst job being a dentist. I mean, I, res I have a lot of respect for dentists because they are up in our, our ugly muck mouths. Look, and they got to get close, and then when they clean you, oh. your, your, sh your shrapnel spraying on them, and then they take the sick home to their family. It's disgusting. I hate going to the dentist, but I always feel so good about myself after I leave. You got to take care of your choppers. <laughs> really. <laughs> Somebody asked me, do I have any, um, do I have any cavities? Did I get any cavities? I said, no, I haven't gotten cavities in years. You know why? There's no more tooth surface to fill. <laughs> like, with, with, all, with all the candy I eat, please, you know, my teeth have been filled. But the best investment that I ever made in my life, look. White, white, thank you. I had braces for like three years, though. Um, I had braces, but I also... Um, I did not grow up at a time where there were white fillings. They were all silver. So while they're beautiful in the front, you know, when I throw my head back and laugh uproariously, all you would see is silver. So about... Oh, they are good teeth. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Daddy. Um, about 15 years ago, I made the investment because it wasn't covered by insurance. Probably the best investment I ever made. I got all the silvers picked out and the white put in. A vanity thing. That's why insurance didn't cover it. I'll see you at 12.30. Best money ever. It's important. Take care of your teeth, kids. Yeah, but I'm saying the white fillings. I know. Like, when I laugh, I just... Because I, I have a big gaping smile. You know, I can't control myself when I laugh. I don't, I don't cover my mouth. I try to cover my mouth so you don't have to look in there. The old silver ones. Yeah. Might as well just keep them now. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> I got a gold tooth. Do you? Yeah. In the back? In the back. Oh my God, Charlie Sheen. I'm getting another one too for, for Pete. Have fun at lunch. 12.30. Hi there. So, Brandon, we're doing the 12.30 and then the promo Anthony, after. And then we're going to come back and change for the one thing. Nice okay. I was going to call you after seeing this wig on Friday's show and, and do what, what? hug you through the phone. This, oh, yeah, yeah. This very nice. is, oh my Thank God. You. I felt very, very good about the, the outfit today, the makeup, the hair. Only thing, really good. Yeah, only thing I don't like is there's something laying down here. <laughs> I had, um, well, it's probably all the fiber. I had two apple pears. Have you ever had an apple pear? Mm -mm. Oh my God. I had a pair of apples. They're like, they're like snickerdoodles, <laughs> like the Labradoodle dogs or something. And apple pears, kind of like, um, you know, they're, they're born in the lab, you know what I mean? And uh, it's a cross between an apple and a pear, and they're only available a particular time of year. Kind of like clementines. And Kevin, did you? All right, I have a meeting with management. Come on now. You have to go. <laughs> yes. The manager you sleep with. Yes, my manager who I sleep with. <laughs> um, promo, probably. Uh, let me see that book so I can um, do my look. It's in the office already. Okay. The Daily News is um, the Daily News is coming over. They're um, doing a they're doing a whole page. I'm so flattered. The New York Daily News a whole page on our show and its thousandth episode. So they're doing that interview um, a little bit later on today. So I have to meet with management and then get ready for the interview. Am I changing clothes for that interview? Can I just keep this on? Yeah. Um, you can keep that. Too. Perfect. I wonder, I wonder if our son is in here, whether he's across the street. He's fled the scene. I love you for watching today. Who's coming over tomorrow? The Apprentices. Oh, that's right. The Apprentice comes on tonight, and then the two fires come on tomorrow. I love you for watching. Okay. Bye. I mean, bye. I've been working on the same sandwich since this morning. You just missed our son and his cousin. President's Day, so there's no school. And then it's also the kickoff to Kevin's, um, 
to kick off to his winter break. So he's off all week. Unfortunately, we're not. So going away is not an option. He could have gone down to Miami to see his grandparents, but they'll be up here next week. When I got here today, I just said, just put me in some black slacks. I like that pair. I've had them for like four years, and they've been taken in like four different times in the waist. But there's nothing like a great side zip slack. They're a wool from a company called Pure Cashmere. They were an investment, but we've definitely gotten our money's worth. And it started to get so warm in the studio, I had to take off the black and white sweater. Uh, and a pair of Louboutin flats. You know, I love a nice shoe. So, I hope you had a very, very nice rested weekend. I'm still aglow with Dancing with Prince. Okay. Let's do some best Wendy's. Let me after show. <clears throat> trying. <laughs> I hear you. <clears throat> this first one is from Rosio. And Rosie says, Hey, Wendy, how you doing? I'm 24 years old, and I will be 25 in June. I'm independent. I pay my own bills but my mom still feels the need to constantly buy me things and send them to me. We live far from each other. I'm an only child and I appreciate that she wants to care for me, but she's not letting me grow up. <coughs> she still pays <coughs> my phone bill and it's always, uh, and is always finding a way to pay for something of mine. I don't want, I don't want any more gifts. I think it's, and I think it's okay for me to struggle a little. How can I get her to let me live my life as an adult? I know she loves me and doesn't want me to grow up all the way, but I don't think it's helping me. I still feel like a child because of her. Oh, Rosie, first of all, I think that this is really sweet. Your mom is letting you grow up, which is why you're living so far from her, I'm assuming with her blessing, because you said in here that you live, we live far away from each other. I think it's sweet. I could see myself doing something like this for our son. Um, being grown up is a matter of action, but it's also a matter of um, your thought process. You are a grown up. You want to pay your own bills. Let your mom pay your um, cell phone bill or whatever she's paying. Let her. Why not? <laughs> At least you know how to do it. You do know how to rip, rip a check and lick a stamp. If that's how you do things these days, I know that's how I still do things. Um, as long as you know how to balance your own bank account and you have the um, mentality that at 24 years old you would like to pay for your own stuff, then I don't see anything wrong um, with your mom helping out. And if anything, speaking as a mom of an only, it probably hurt her feelings terribly if you totally cut her off. Parents when kids move out of the house, parents feel very useless. Um, and it's difficult for them to find a, find a space back into your life when you're an independent child. Um, I know for my parents, you know, uh, obviously career-wise and, you know, financially and everything, I'm doing better than my parents ever did in, in their lifetime raising us. And I go out of my way to make sure that they still have an important place in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they can't pay a bill, they can't tell me what to do, they can't give me advice because I don't listen to them. But what they can do, they can take this Costco list. <laughs> and I don't have a Costco card, and they, they go grocery shopping. My, my mom is the only one who I would ever let shop for me. And, um, they come to our house. I make sure that I have all the ingredients for them. They love to cook. 
they, you know, they cook, I clean, and that's how we bond. Um, don't stop your mom from doing these things. It's nice. It's sweet. She's constantly sending you things. Care packages. It's sweet. What do you think, Tristan? Yeah, I, I think it's nice. I mean, as long as you're, you know, managing your own checkbook and being financially responsible. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a little... A little help from your parents. Yeah. Your mom. Also, she is still young. So... It's, I think it's amazing that at 24 years old, you're so young and you don't want help from anybody. Yeah. Like, you would rather go without than have help even, even from your mom. I think that uh, that is so sweet. But take the help while your mom um, is offering it. Because the second you get yourself a boyfriend, that's going to all change. I'm not, I'm not sending... What is it now? I need some change for the pizza. Because I don't have... She doesn't have change to pay back. How much was the pizza? You stay right there. Speaking of children. You can get a slice of pizza in New York for $2.25. Let me see what that pizza looks like. Let me have a bite. How about that? <laughs> and don't tell me to chill, Kevin. Two twenty-five. Here's three dollars. Not a penny more. Give me my ten dollars back. Mm -hmm. Give me the money back that I gave you. Mm -hmm. Take this. This is a poor example of New York City pizza. What the heck? Mm. Goodbye. Take your garbage. Have fun. See you in the morning. One more, and then I have to go enjoy my freedom <laughs> for 24 hours. Um, this one's from Ela B. Ela says, hello, Mrs. Hunter. My name is Ela. I was born in India. I'm 23 years old, and I came to the U.S. 13 years ago. My parents want me to become a doctor. Therefore, I got a bachelor's in biology from a top SUNY school. I am so scared to tell my parents that I do not want to... Oh, God, I know what you that I do not want to become a doctor, but a dancer slash entertainer. <laughs> I love and respect my parents so much that I don't have the guts to even start a conversation. I spend every day struggling with my mind. Please help. Well, Ela, your parents are going to flip. They're going to flip like a small car on a windy night going over the George Washington Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> so dramatic. They're going to flip. Um, but it's your life. And before your parents invest one more dime, you've got your bachelor's in biology. Thing is that you haven't said anything about medical school. So before you get more invested in this whole doctor notion, which, by the way, you'll make a terrible doctor because your heart's not in it. Um, and that's why it's so important for you to have this conversation with your parents, like right now, because I'm sure that they are asking you at this particular point, when are you gonna apply for medical school? Your parents might cut you off financially in some way, shape, or form, and tell you that you have to now fund your own dancer, entertainer, whatever that means. What does that mean? <laughs> dancer, entertainer, you know, and, and what kind of dancer? like? A booty girl entertaining in a Nas video or do you mean like an Alvin Ailey dancer and what type of entertainer do you want to be an adult entertainer like what do you want to do so yeah you have to have your list in your mind rehearse it in the mirror take a deep breath and sit down with your mom and your dad together and you're new to the country, and they're happy to be here in America where allegedly it's the land of the free, home of the, your parents are going to flip. Your parents are gonna flip, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're gonna flip. They're gonna flip. And for a brief moment, they might cut you off. For a brief moment, you know? But for a brief moment, they might cut you off. I'm sorry, dear. I'm scared for you. 
I don't mean to scare you more, but I'm <clears throat> scared for you. I love and respect my parents so much that I don't have the guts to even start the conversation. For the rest of you, before you declare a major in college, please be true to yourself. Don't major in something because that's what your parents want. I mean, you can minor in something that your parents want. Like, I want Kevin to minor in business. I prefer for him to major in business. But he's got, he seems to have a business acumen. Like, he doesn't want to talk show, and he doesn't want to be a rapper, and he doesn't want to be a basketball player. He wants to be a boss. And, you know, I, I would never push him into a particular career because that just makes for a miserable person. It just ultimately speaking, you're miserable. And you know what? And you live life always feeling that you're missing out on something because you took the wrong turn, because you were trying to make other people happy. That's all. So don't let your parents push you into majors for the rest of you. And don't let your parents push you into who you need to marry. I mean, if your parents give you all the correct tools that you need as an adult, then you'll figure it out. You, you will. You'll figure it out. Some of you have pushy parents, like me and my son. But I would hope that my husband and I uh, would push him in the correct direction where we all get something out of it. He makes us proud, but he's also happy and fulfilled in his life and career and whatever, you know, girl he chooses to marry. And, you know, if he's happy, I'm relatively happy, <laughs> you know? Oh, God. Oh, you guys, you're so cute. Oh. This is my ooh baby, it's cold outside. Look, ooh, ooh baby, it's cold outside. I've got the blues. We have to bring that hit back, Tristan. <laughs> it was summertime, it's been too long, but now it's winter. I've got the blues. Maybe tomorrow we'll treat you to that. We don't have to clear that song. I made the words up myself. So the after show will have to pay me for playing. <laughs> I love you for watching, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Oh, Geraldo and Lisa will be here tomorrow. Who do you think's going to win tonight? I think Lisa. She seems to... What do you think, Tristan? Lisa. Lisa, yeah. Lisa's going to win. I was just too hot to keep it on. Love you for watching the after show. I'm going back to Jersey. Everybody. Really loved my uh, my outfit. It's so simple, you know. I got to work this morning, and every once in a while, we'll have one of these days. What you, oh my gosh! It was originally hundred and twenty nine dollars, and it was on sale for forty nine ninety eight, and we got it last season. So it's probably not the Chico's DVF. Probably originally three hundred dollars. And we got it for three hundred dollars, but it's about it's high low. This is not even cashmere. Is this cashmere? Yeah, it's wool. It's wool. Wool? Yeah. But it's just a five. For this price? Yeah. They're both available still on Chico.com. They're both available. Mm -hmm. The skirt too. Yep, the skirt too. Is it Chico's? Yep. At Chico's. Okay, the skirt is at Chico's, but if you you know Chico's it does generous sizing. I'll tell you how generous. This is a size zero. Yeah. So, <laughs> just know that. Zero. Excuse me? I no, hey, I've been saying it all along. There are some designers that like to make us feel better about ourselves by cheating and lying about what the, what the uh, true size is. I'm a size four or six at the bottom. Every once in a while, an eight if I've had a burrito. <laughs> Um, so they're doing the shoot, so you don't need to take the... Yeah. Oh, so let's just wait until... Oh, yeah, right. I'm just going to keep everything on then. Take a deep breath. Um... And they're out there already, so I guess we're just going to...
Have we're doing a full photo we, shoot. She, we're gonna go back to our room, and I will come get you when we're ready. All right. Such a little stuff. So, anyway, I have some jerk chicken marinating right now. I was going to make it last night, but I was modeling until like 8 o'clock at night by the time I got home. So I was exhausted. But um, I have the jerk chicken marinating in the Tupperware uh, for them. For me, I feel like having a nice piece of liver. Uh, it's cold. I'm cold. Liver's got a lot of iron. And uh, it's good for you. They don't like liver. I like liver. <laughs> Thanks, Brendan. I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> Come on. We have a meeting in the ladies' room. Come on. <laughs> oh. You want to do some Ask Wendy's or no? Yes, I would love to. Do you have them in your pocket? Yeah. By the way, um, I really did like Regina Carter. I love her. I mean, I like, She's adorable. I like so Toya funny. also, but Toya's a oh. grown up. Uh, you expect. I don't know, a sense of entitlement from the heiress type people. It, she was, she, that's how, she's what? Very, she's very, very, yes, great foundation, great values. Yeah, and that means a lot to parents. You yes. know, people tell me that about our son. Um, from his teachers to, you know, other adults and everything. And that, that's a really good feeling. But that girl right there, her father has money in spades. And she could be any kind of way that she wants. And he told her, and we saw it on the special, you could, oh, Toya tries to set budgets, which is a lot of times what moms do, because we're moms. And daddy, that's daddy's little girl, he said, no, you can have whatever you want. I don't even think I'd be nice if I was 16 year old, years old and had a Rolex, diamond earrings, a Ferrari, okay. uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Beamer. A Beamer. Homeschooled too, so I don't have to deal with you trollops. Okay. And then, when she, and then when she does go to school, her mother drives her in her fancy car, and then she gets picked up by a bodyguard. I don't even know whether I could wrap my head around that, honestly. Mm. You know what I mean? How do you think you'd be, um, Antoine, with a skirt on? Same way, my skirt. Yeah. Just chilling. Do you think you, I step out of my Ferrari. Do you think you'd be a jerk? No. At 16? Nope. I guess it depends on your parenting. My it parents wouldn't let me be a jerk. A great foundation. Yeah. Not on, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dear Wendy, I need, um, I need advice. This girl and I were best friends since seventh grade through high school. We drifted apart, and she always been unhappy with any of my successes, whether school awards, extracurricular activities, and as always, quick to put me down. Is it time to let go of the friendship, or should I try one more time? Nope. Let go. <sighs> Did that recently myself. Mm -hmm. You let it go, and I, it, I'm sorry that... You don't have anybody around you who could tell you this. That you had to reach out to me, but I appreciate it. But yeah, I do believe in busting up friendships over a mess like this, so let it go. You don't even have to tell her why, just it's done, okay? And by the way, there is no going back and making up because she's shown her true colors to you already. Jonathan, and that's, that's from Venetia. Um, this one's from Jonathan T. Jonathan writes, hey Wendy, how you doing? Okay, I'm stuck at a crossroads in my life. I'm 28 years old. I've always wanted to finish college as I dropped out. Oh, God. That's the bat phone. You want me to get it? Yeah, yeah. can you bring it in here? Because yeah. Kev is home and um, the exterminator's there, and I don't know what's going on. No, we don't have bugs. But, you know, yeah, yeah. when you have a house, you know, the exterminator comes. It's in the winter. Yes, the exterminator comes. Mr. Hunt is getting it. He's in there. Okay. The exterminator comes once a month. 12 months a year on the outside, and then once every two months, you know, on the inside. Just regular maintenance. Just regular maintenance. Yeah. Especially during the winter, like you said, because, you know. Bugs get cold. Bugs get cold. They want to come in your house. Mm -hmm. The mice, yeah. the squirrels. Are you kidding? The raccoons. Okay. And the last awesome. thing you want to the do. Awesome. The, <laughs> with those long, hard noses. <laughs> and, and the nails and the tail. Oh, my God. And the hardwood floors. Yes. Mm, mm, my mouth is watering. My mouth is watering. The tablets here. Okay, back to your problems, Jonathan. Okay. Look, this has this is to be over. I'm sorry, but there's, there's just too much going on. Come on, Jonathan. I'll get to you tomorrow. Okay. I love you for watching. I love you for watching. See, see you next time on the after show. Leave Jonathan hanging. Hi. 
Martin Short was on our show today promoting the, um, his play and the 40th anniversary of the fabulous SNL. And I'm taking a little time to enjoy The View. And our friend Keenan is uh, on The View. I was um, actually checking up on something. You know how I've been doing something a couple of times you've seen on the after show um, where I've had meetings and meetings and me well there, I always have meetings about a bunch of different things but I've been working on a project so now I can come out of the closet. I didn't do it. Um, I, am, I have a line of clothing coming out on HSN. Very excited about this because I've had everything to do with this and worked really hard. It's approximately eight months in the making. Um, I'm working with fabulous manufacturers across town in Manhattan. So when I tell you I'm going across town um, most recently, it's been because um, that's what I'm doing. I go over there or they come here or we go up to my husband's office, you know, for, for just meetings. But across town is where the manufacturer is and the, the racks of clothes and stuff. And now they've been bringing things in um, for me to take a look at here. Uh, it's called Wendy Williams. <laughs> uh, and why did I decide to do a fashion line? Well, simply because when this show first started, I had no idea that um, the clothing would be such a big deal. Whether you love it or whether you hate it, whether you think my dresses are too short or, you know, you know, I look too frumpy or, you know, you love something. Because we're not going to, we're not going to always love what we wear, each of us. But I said, why not? And I was approached with the idea. It's season six of the show, and I'm ready to do this. <clears throat> and um, all the clothes in this first run are under $100, $100 and under. And what are you going to get? Pencil skirts, wrap dresses. If you look back to last Monday, show them, Tristan. I think it's last Monday. I wore one of my dresses. Um, and a lot of you said you really liked it. Wrap dress under a hundred bucks. What is the exact price point? I'm not sure. I can't think. My head is popping off. I've got so many things going on. I'm preparing um, my speech for a women's empowerment event that I'm doing in Cleveland um, in about three weeks. I am writing jokes. I told you, you know, I'm writing good jokes, preparing this week. I'm trying to moisturize and get my sleep. Little Kevin has off from school next week. Um, it's All-Star Weekend this weekend. Originally, we were supposed to be out of town, but we're going to be here. So my guys are going to be, you know, doing things regarding the sports, and I'll be doing things with my guy regarding the get down, get down. i got to get into some of those parties. But I will tell you that um, I really enjoyed meeting Martin Short. Wait, I'm bouncing back and forth. Let's talk about the line first. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, under $100, pencil skirts, wrap dresses. You know how I get gapping with blouses. My blouses, uh, the thing that makes my blouses special, there's a secret snap right here at the gapping part, you know, for, for us busty girls. But guess what? Um, the, the line is for, oh, come on and just drop everything. I'll, I'll be quick. That, that's the Mexican food? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to talk quick and then... What rhymes with floor? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm playing. You're my people. Um, sometimes. Um, anyway, the line is, like I said, everything $100 and under. I'll be showing a few pieces in the month of March. Um, I will have a two-hour show at 9 o'clock in the morning on March 28th. From 9 to 11, I'll be on. And you can look at hsn.com. I mean, I'll remind you of this again. And then I'll be on again the same day from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I'll have my models out there, you know, HSN style. Uh, but before March 28th, which is a Saturday, my pieces, uh, a few of them will be available online March 6th. Um, the sizing, size extra small to 3X. And I'm very meticulous about trying to make sure that the same leggings for a Saturday with a fabulous, you know, tunic to go with them would work with a small girl as they would with the 3X girl. And the fabrics are sumptuous. I mean, everything from feeling the fabrics to 
picking out the buttons. I, you know, the, you know, there's this one outfit. They were showing me snaps. They brought out 20 different snaps. I didn't like any of them. I said, I need to see more snaps. They bring out like 200 snaps. Literally the 199th snap, I said, this is the one. <laughs> um, so it's from my heart to you. And yes, I will at times be wearing my own clothes on my show, you know, but I still love my other things, you know, but, you know, quite frankly, uh, the budget for clothing at this show is limitless. That's not like it is for me and you, you know, a DVF a wrap dress like the beautiful one I wore today, which happens to be an old friend. And by the way, uh, yeah, I do recycle clothes here at the show. How dare you all think? Well, so, not all of you. There was one person that I read, but I've read this before. Oh my gosh, Wendy, you were still wearing that dress? Yes. <laughs> Please. I mean, there's a limitless budget, but I don't take advantage of it like that, darling. <sighs> but the dress that I wore today was like a 400 and something dollar dress. You can get a wrap dress on my line for well under that. I told you, everything $100 and under. Um, I have weekend wear where you'll look well turned out as you run around town, whatever you're doing, uh, the campus, whatever. And then I have, um, you know, I call it uh, working woman wear, you know. Why? Why should clothes be a lot of money? Do you know what? Honestly, you know my splurges? My splurges are accessories, darling. I love a good handbag. So I will not be making handbags because um, I like collector's bags. You know I do. You know, I like the hard to get bags that every girl's not going to have. And, and that's what I like. That's where my money goes in real life. Um, and good now. I still like stuff from the drugstore, but you know, I'm a woman of a particular age and I have definitely gotten into department store, the good jars of caviar slather and all that stuff. So that, but when it comes to, please, you know, my favorite leggings prior to this line, Walgreens. Now my favorite leggings are my own leggings. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I have 40 inch legs. And you know what happens with the Walgreens that I bought, with the leggings that I normally buy? I got like this much ankle showing because I'm a long, tall, tall Sally. And I'm looking out for you short girls too. My leggings have a little trick at the bottom. I have 40 inch legs. My go all the way down. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Enough about that. I'm, I'm very excited though, and I'm glad I don't have to hold this secret anymore. Um, Martin Short. Never met him, loved him, came to play. And he looks like a cousin of my Doug. Don't they look like brothers yeah. or something? And it's so funny that his real name is Short and he's short. <laughs> Where, the, the audience was full of short people today. How about that lady on uh, Ask Wendy? How about that woman at the end of the show with, you know, one of my favorite things? I love a glittery showgirl jumpsuit. Ta-da! She looked terrific. I don't like a poached egg because of that runny yolk. Tristan, do you like a poached egg? I do, yeah. And you, what, sop up the poach with a piece of toast? Yeah, like Eggs Benedict. Yes. Or like uh, breakfast potatoes. Yes. Sop it up, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather loved a poached egg. I made the joke, I don't want a bird hatching in my throat. You know, you know, you, got, you have that yolk in there. The yolk is really the baby, right? If you ever crack an egg and see some blood in it, you know, you ever crack an egg, we all have, and seen a dot of red blood in it, Tristan? Mm-mm. Well, I have. <laughs> well, I want you to know that the myth is, and this is what I've always grown up th th under the impression, that that's the fertilized egg, like it's two seconds away from hatching. Eat it quick. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> oh, I have an Ask Wendy. Again, I love when I do Ask Wendy and then you guys help each other. I re that really does, no matter what we agree to disagree with, that is one thing that makes the after show community. It's nice. Oh my gosh, it's so warming and so heartfelt. And you help each other with a heart, which is great. You know, um, there are some of you, some of you that say the after show is better than the actual show. Um, I think the after show is as good as the, the actual show uh, in a different way. But the after show is more heartfelt because I'm not running up against a commercial Clock. break. You know, I mean, the show out there is heartfelt, but you understand what I'm saying. Look, I'm in, I'm in a robe, okay? <laughs> For God's sakes. I could be out there in a robe and my street wig. 
Doug goes to me when I came in this morning. Doug, Martin Short, Doug. He goes, oh, your wig is so glamorous. I said, thank you, Doug. <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming up. I want to make sure I get me some more. <laughs> okay, enough about that. Let me put on my glasses. Some of you were still asking me for the glasses. Go to the wardrobe section of the website. You'll see where I get my readers. Okay. Okay. Hi, Wendy. My name is Talia. How you doing? I have a close friend who has a bad habit of going home with the first guy that she sees in the bar and she always leaves me at the... We're done. We... Wait, hold on. Wait. She always leaves me at the club alone. I think she's a little slutty. Her behavior makes me look bad. So what should I do? You do exactly what I've done. You leave those friends for visiting your house. Doesn't mean you can't be friends with anymore. I, quite frankly, I think sluts are very interesting. Uh, you know, the mentality of a, a woman like that. Doesn't mean it has to be you. Maybe I'm just weird. I enjoy having a variety of people in my social circle. Doesn't mean that I have to agree with them. As a matter of fact, it's more fun. Oh, wow, the view has Flo Rida on. Hey, Flo. Rida. Anyway, um, now, um, I, I, you, I mean, when, when I say in my social circle, you know, I don't have a big social circle. It's just not me. I don't have enough time in the day. I'm trying to, you know, do a line and organize and moisturize. I don't, I don't have time for biddies. Not for nothing. That means girls, Tristan. <laughs> um, listen, we've all had these friends. And friends like this... For you, as a layperson, Talia, and at 22 years old, yep, this is right around the age that I started realizing my career in radio was taking off. And I was so focused on it. And, you know, one of the things you do as a radio personality is you go out and you host parties. They give you free drinks. They put you in the VIP. They throw a microphone to you. And all your job is you're hired for one hour or two hours. And you say, hey, throw your hands in the air and wave them like a jet. Woo! Really? Where's Brooklyn at? Where's Brooklyn at? <laughs> you know, New York City, Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, Long Island, Westchester, Jersey. And then you collect your money and you go home. And there's a car outside waiting for you because it's a professional thing and you're for hire. You don't understand how many times I've been in a club with slutty friends who I'm looking around because I'm ready to go because literally I was always about my business. Like I love the club and I like to party, but it's always about business. Back, you know, when I um, was on the radio, always. Don't mistake my good time for really wanting to stay longer than I have to. You know, I was there to get my coins and make, make moves to get popular and it worked. <laughs> but fortunately, I come to the... I'd go to the club with my girlfriends in a car for hire for me and I would leave the club alone because they were all busy trying to mess around with rappers, you know, up in the VIP or cute boys down on the floor and I didn't have time for that. At 22, I didn't have a big enough mouth. I was, I was like you, Talia. What should I do? But you know what I did? By at least 27, I had backbone enough to understand, well, wait a minute, I got a good thing here with this microphone. <laughs> you know, I don't really have time for these biddies. I traded the biddies in for an assistant and a couple security people because it's about business. What do you do as a layperson? I'll tell you what you do because now your friends are leaving you. Now you have to walk to the parking garage by yourself. You have to drive home by yourself. You don't even have anybody to go to the diner with afterwards because you I would not invite this girl to the club. That's all. Um, I never told my friends why I did not invite them. I just didn't. You don't have to tell them. You just show them by ac action, you know? So go to the club with different friends and you leave the sluts behind. That's it. What rhymes with chore? Love you for watching. See you next time on the extra show. Oh, Cheers. hi. We're clear, copy. Did you like today's show? We had fun. <laughs> Those dancers in the dance off were the height of hilarity. I, so, you know what, Wig? This is why I love doing the show. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you see it every day.
the studio audience. Just the energy of it all. Oh my it's God. The Just the best. Ellie dances while she holds the camera. Okay. Marco G is carrying on, motivating the audience. Okay. People are standing up out of nowhere and dancing. Okay. It's not just because it's a date. Like, people, that's how it goes down. Like, this is the funnest show ever. In life. In life. This is the kind of show that takes your mind off your troubles for just one hour. Just one hour. And I love doing it. Shout out to the boy from Sierra Leone who won the... What up, Sierra Leone? And it was my honor to meet mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. Wendy watchers today who... Um, She's a three-time cancer survivor. Wow. Uh-huh. And, and um, she, I, she wanted to take a picture. I don't take pictures here. But she asked for tickets for the show. And apparently, Tristan, you know, you and Jessica are very good at, you know, because you know I don't know how to retweet and retweet. So she says, so she says to me, Wendy, it was when you were on Broadway in Chicago, and I told you break a leg, and I told you that you know you entertain me every day. She had kidney cancer at the time, but she's had two other kinds of cancers also. So thanks to the watchful eyes of, I do read your comments, and if I do want to you know say something to somebody, then I can ask Jessica and Tristan. But you guys are also very good at you know reading and, and maintaining. Thank you both. Uh, anyway, so we got her tickets for the show and she was here and she said that I really helped her through by taking her mind off her troubles. That's a good feeling. That's a great feeling. Okay, I didn't want to brag, but it's a fabulous yes, feeling. Yes, 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 the power. To be able to make, make people... Make a difference. In such an easy way. All you have to do is get yourself a talk show and be pleasant. That, <laughs> and if you don't have a talk show, just be pleasant. Just be pleasant. Do, have you ever told an old lady that she looks beautiful? Yes. Excuse me? <laughs> yes. I'm doing it. I won't hit no nothing, but yes. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about in general. Oh, yes. Let me tell you something. When you tell... When you tell, tell an old lady every day. When you tell a stranger, particularly an older person, that... You know, I like your shoes, sir. Very stylish. Or, oh my gosh, madam, your hair is gorgeous. That's it. Don't get to a full. Do you know? Do you know? Like something simple like that. You don't even have to have a talk show to just make somebody's day better. Mm -hmm. You work on that. The tongue is very powerful. The tongue is very powerful. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I'm feeling, yeah. You know what I'm saying. That was a great package too. That the um the winner of the dance contest won. What was that, a 62-inch TV and a whole bunch of stuff a from Omaha? The and then the, the girls didn't go home empty-handed either. They got prizes too? $200 gift cards for Omaha Steak. Fantastic. Each of them. That's great. So you got a, that's a nice package of meat. <laughs> if you would like some delicious Super Bowl recipes. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> go to wendyshow.com. Hit the recipe um, aisle. Uh, George Duran's food. Every last one of those things, I kid you not, I was throwing down. If I had to pick a favorite thing, though, it has to have been the bacon tater tots with the cheese stuffed in the middle. Mm. Problem is that you have to have a whole assembly line in your kitchen if you're going to have, like, say you're going to have 25 people over. You know how many of those things you, you tater and totten all night long, just <laughs> rolling and stuffing. Tater and totten, frying and <laughs> dipping. Um, Come on in. So tomorrow's the big day. Our thousandth show. Ask me how I feel. I feel like a winner. Like a winner. Seems like just yesterday the show story, you know? We've come such a long way. I remember when our show first started, we had, um, we put the microphone stands in the audience and audience members would chime in on hot topics, but 
you know, because we are live out of New York, <laughs> you know, that required somebody to have their finger on that 10 second delay button right away. And you just never knew what somebody's going to stand up and really say when they're chiming in on something. And then it also, I, I, I so we, we did that for maybe a half a season. We did that during the six week sneak peek. You know what? I think that's one of the things that we stopped once we got officially picked up. We stopped putting the microphones in the audience. But we do have Hot Topic Sound Off, which I do like here. So it is a way for my co-hosts to participate. And I've called them my co-hosts since the show first started. I just, I, I, I mean, I, I remember the first day of the, um, of the six week sneak peek and yeah, so we had the microphones in the audience and uh, but I remember <coughs> the first time I heard here's Wendy and I, I went out the fir very first day and because we're in New York and I was a staple in New York radio for decades I was feeling the love like I don't think there were any out of towners that day because I was a brand new girl with a brand new show and so everybody in the audience, like people from Michigan weren't coming. I, you know, I'm a new show. You know, they're going, you know, Rachel Ray next door. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Now people come from around the world um, specifically to come here, you know, London and whatnot. You'd be shocked. Um, Dubai and, you know, as close as Jersey, but as far as the other side of the world. But anyway, so the audience was full of like my people, people, people who knew exactly who I am, followed my career, got the tickets and were here. And when they said, and here's Wendy, and th back then there was no doors that opened. I literally pushed doors, like swinging doors, like I'm a waiter at a restaurant and I'm coming out with a platter of food. <laughs> charming got us to where we are though. So it was very charming. I pushed the doors open and everybody rose to their feet and I started crying and I just knew that like, these are my people, you know who I am, and you're here to support, you're not an audience, you're my co-host! <laughs> and it's been that way ever since. And we had something called the Truth Booth. We did away with that after our six-week trial also. The Truth Booth is, by the way, the success of our six-week trial is how these other shows are now modeling. That's why you see so many six-week trials. And some work and some don't. My girls at The Real, they had their six... There might have been four weeks, I think. Anyway, they had a, a sneak peek during the summer also, and there they are on TV. Uh, didn't work out for um, um, Fran Drescher, but uh, it and didn't work out for Chris, uh, that woman, Jenner. Uh, but they all went through the model after people saw what my company, do, you know, who produces the show, Deb Mar Mercury, Morton Ira. After they saw the success that Morton Ira had with with my show. It's now become like a model. Anyway, um, we had the truth booth and the truth booth, booth is just that, you know, there was a booth built and you go in there and you confess, you know, something. Um, and because Ask Wendy, even though I was doing it on the radio, you know, it, Ask Wendy has grown through the years. Ask Wendy was, you know, Wendy, does my skirt match my blouse. Wendy, you know, my son has a cold and he was sent home from school. What do you, how do you think I should deal with a teacher? Now ask Wendy. And, oh, so we made the truth booth because the truth booth is where you get the more salacious stuff. You know, if somebody, if all you see is a silhouette, you know, and disguise somebody's voice and then they tell you something. But what ended up happening is ask Wendy became juicy in our first season and juicier like today you know in this season <laughs> I love this show I love everything about it I like the commute in the morning we listen to loud music we listen to um Shade full five. <laughs> and um, I like 
not Soul Town. What's the one? The Groove on on Sirius XM. We listen to the music very, very loud in the morning, like loud as hell. Gets me going. And don't let the sun be out. Woo! Hey. And then I get here and, you know, I like being put together by my guys, my producers. They, we have a rhythm now. We, we have a rhythm and they're just all very, very special. I like working with Kevin. Uh, it doesn't work for everybody, but we have a very good understanding of <coughs> where you've been all day. <laughs> um, but you know what, without people being patient, and when I say people, I'm talking about people that pay the bills, you know, Debmar Mercury, without them being patient, and allowing our show to grow, we wouldn't be here. Because good TV gets canceled all the time. And I'll tell you, and a shout out to all my general managers and all my station groups, I appreciate you uh, being patient as well. I know when we started, you know, some of you had me on at 10 o'clock in the morning, like here in New York, but a lot of you had me on at, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know? And now you've been patient with the show and now you got me, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you know, no more of that overnight thing, uh, you know, it just people have been very, very patient. And um, a shout out to BET, you know, it's pretty bossed up that in, the, in some markets we're on three times a day. Well, I don't stay up until midnight on account I gotta come here and do Are you crying, Jessica? Oh. Jessica, you haven't even been here since the beginning. You don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But, but I'm from New York. So you knew me? Mm hmm. Is it a big deal for you to be working here? Mm hmm. Um. I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm very, very grateful. And the second I stop being grateful, it's time to stop doing the show. Because I, I know that you guys can... You know, you're not stupid. You know the difference between the genuine article, somebody who genuinely wants to be there at their job, and somebody who's just doing it for a paycheck. I'm not that girl. I'm not that good of an actress. Although, one of the things that I do love about doing the show of course it's the show itself, but so many opportunities that I've been afforded outside of the show. It's fantastic to have a talk show. The best. Broadway. I have items in the Smithsonian, which by the way, they're still not put up, but we've been in the back room. I see the stuff sitting there. You know what they have to do? They have to clear out stuff and put stuff in, but items in the Smithsonian. I'm not even dead or old. You know, sometimes they don't put you in a museum until you're dead or old. I did think like a man. Just so many great things that have happened because of this show. So I want to thank you for supporting. Some of you are very lovely all the time, but you know, for, even for those of you who shade me and stuff, I am too grateful to be here to ever take your words seriously. So I'm going to take my butler self and go in here and fantasize about what I'm going to have when we go out for dinner tonight. And as usual, I love you for watching. See you tomorrow when I turn 1,000. <laughs>
I did. And she was holding the camera and crying at the same time. Well, he's playing music, so we can't play any of this. Yes, I can, I can turn him down. down. Yeah. All right, come on, Tristan. We can do the after show here. Apparently, we're, we're about to do a staff picture. So now, wait. The audience comes past this area, so I have to go to my room anyway? Yes. All right. So then meet me at the room, Tristan. Okay. All right, I'll come get you for the photo. Great job. Congratulations. It's a milestone. Look at your silver fox. Except when you look, look at the socks, though. I forgot black socks. Oh, my God, Brady. <laughs> I can't but wait to But you should change. see his wife. Ow. Yeah, he can't wait for her to get home. We're going out, all of us, for dinner, not Just Brendan. Just keep her sober. He has, to, he has to go home and watch the watch boys. The kids. But we're going out for dinner. I'm going to make sure that she drinks extra, then put her <laughs> in a car, and she's going to keep that dress on. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have a third baby. Oh. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Thanks, boss. All right. Charles. Doctor, you want me to put this in there? Yeah, I won't. This, well, I might wear this again. Okay. I don't know for what. Maybe costume night at the Hunters. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I mean, what to say, what to say, I just, you know, and do you remember when we had our fashion show the other day, and, and um, we were saying, like for the um, SAG Award red carpet or the Golden Globes or something, how slacks, like don't overlook slacks, and you know I'm not a slack wearer, but I love this jumpsuit. I absolutely love it. And let me tell you something. I picked it out in two seconds. Memsor came to the house in Jersey. I'll give you the origin. You're gonna die. First of all, you know, I got big ones, so it wouldn't close. It's a little bustier action under here. Um, this is a plain cummerbund. Memsor bedazzled it. You know, we're from the same creative wheelhouse as far as clothing is concerned. It's not how much you pay for something, it's what you do with it. Uh, so this is a cummerbund, just a plain, you know, men's cummerbund. And he sent it to the bedazzlement shop downstairs, Michael Lee, my art director. <laughs> and then he got the bedazzlement down the side if you'll notice very closely at the bottom, you're going to see the seam. My legs are very... Oh, Tristan's, a, Tristan's back. And a mess. If you'll notice, you see, we had to add some on because I've got 40-inch legs. And the designer who made this jumpsuit, Betsy Johnson. Thousandth episode. We had an endless budget. But I thought a gown would be very predictable. And so did Memsor. I love this. And I love these. Mm. And these are comfortable. You know who else I love? Besides Betsy Johnson and, and Dinosaur for pulling this together? I love wig. This is a wig that I wore at the Soul Train Awards, but I didn't wear it in this fashion. I mean, he curled it with a little tiny curling iron, so it's barely recognizable. I don't know what this is. All I know is, is that he put me in hair like this a few years ago. Tristan, do you remember? Yep. But it was black. So I was wearing the bohemian hair, and it was in the color black, and it was just too much of a shock for me, and I didn't like it. But this time around, he kept my hair color markations and twirled a uh, um, wig. Yes. I was just talking about how much I love this wig and that how when you made it the first time years ago it was in black. This I don't mind wearing again. You just tell me when you want me to wear it and I will cooperate. Oh, great, great. And um, Antoine, um, Memsor? Yes, dear. I was just telling them the secret of our outfit and letting them know that you know I'm not a slacks person and Memsor brought over to, you know, he came to Jersey. He had an assortment of all kinds of gowns and things like that. I didn't even try this on when you were over. I tried this on after you left. Yes. <laughs> and then I text you while you were in the car coming home like, saying, it works. It <laughs> works. But, no, no, no. He was pulling Givenchy, Halston. Like, he pulled yeah. the best of the best. And I didn't look, like, I don't normally look in labels. I, I wear clothes. I, I'm not a, what they call a label whore. I didn't even look in the label. I assumed because he had all the world-class designers lined up on the rack, he brings a rack to the house and wheels it in from the car. I assumed that this was, uh, you know, Christian Lacroix or something like that. 
after I tried it on and then I took it off and then I looked at it, I, I was like, oh my God, it's Betsy Johnson. Like, yeah. from the from the relationship collection. Because mm -hmm. Betsy just throws us clothes. Yeah. She, she's our girlfriend. She throws us clothes. And I was telling them about the cummerbund and that you've got to be dazzled. And sometimes being fabulous is not about the whole outfit, but I do love fabulous accessories. Now, I don't know who will... Swarovski. These are Swarovski. All right. Um, you know I love a watch. This is the first time I've worn this, even though I've had it for a year. Um, but this is a satin strap. Van Cleef and Arpel, a satin strap. You know I love a good watch. Uh, but satin strap dressy watches don't work for every day. You've got to wait to be invited to the White House or have your thousandth episode of your talk show or, or something like that. <laughs> and I'm glad I had it. And I was talking about the origin of the shoes. The, shoe. <laughs> the, the shoes are just fantastic. And, that, and they're a higher heel height than we usually wear. They are. Which she thankfully put up with. I had too much had... I had too much to concentrate on. No, but you walked fantastically. You know? I you know, coming out of the dressing room with Brendan knocking and you know, we were affecting Diana Ross when she landed at Central Park. And she, was that Central Park? She walked through the alley or she walked no, out of her dressing room. No, was, um, 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 Madison Square Madison Garden. Square Garden. Yeah, we did an affectation of that. But anyway, um, all in all, I had a terrific tour. I thought the audience looked really beautiful. I love Rand Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson. And he stayed around for both Whisper songs. Like, he was a real fan. He was not just a real fan of the Whispers. He was a fan of this show. Because you know what he says to me during commercial? Like, mind you, Randy is very chatty. I like him. Like, we've made a definite new Judy. So, look. <laughs> Randy says to me about, you know, um, he said, um, you know, your guy, you know, I know your guy from when he used to work on Danza. He's talking about my Brendan, the Silver Fox. And I said, yeah, I said, you know, you know, Brendan and Suzanne met when they were both working at Rosie. And she, and he sees my Suzanne looking uncharacteristically beautiful. I mean, she's a beautiful, she's a beautiful girl, but the, you know, she, somebody beat her face and pulled her hair around. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I swear when I asked Beautiful. her to pull up her dress, I thought she was going to have on the Uggs. And she had her, <laughs> but guess what? Right after Hot Topics, she put on her Uggs underneath her gown. Anyway, so I said to Randy, I said, no. And they met on when they both used to work at Rosie. And now they work here. And it's like, a, it, it, this is a wonderful environment. I said, but no, she's not just the clapper. And he goes, oh, because when I watch the show, he watches our show. He said, when I watch the show, you know, I see her clapping. I said, no, she's actually my supervising producer. Everybody at the show does many jobs. Uh, just because that's the kind of show we started out to be. Yep. <laughs> and now that we have money to have a person at every job, we kind of are still used to doing many jobs. Yep. And so, it, so we do. <laughs> the creators of the show are in town. They're taking me, me out for dinner tonight. And, and, you know, the producers. And we're going to drink... Uh, the show is never over. Oh, no. Oh, no, all right. We're going to drink and we're going to eat and we're going to be merry. We're going to the meatpacking district. I want to hold court at a table for like four hours. Like, this is one of those days where I just really feel like maybe I'll wear this outfit. Are you going to wear that hair? Maybe I will. Also, they, they would like to know that that's the Soul Train wig. I told them that. You weren't here. Oh. <laughs> yes. I like the way... Oh, see... Lipstick, you did a great job. Thank you. With the makeup. Thank you. It's not too much. It's just perfect. I felt very comfortable. I feel very comfortable in all this mess. You look beautiful. I felt beautiful and successful. Well, and like congratulations again. Yeah. Yeah. You worked it's a big hard. Deal. You deserve it. Yeah. Uh, but Monday is another day, so everybody back to work. <laughs> <laughs> there, I, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's the woman we know. Um, you know, I adored the whispers, and, and my audience adored them. And I just, all in all, I think that um, staff did a wonderful job of pulling this show together because I had no idea. Um, I mean, you know, of course I'm always in the planning, but... Ideas get tossed, tossed around all the time, and I don't find out. Like, I forgot about the throne. So when I came out, uh, honestly, I wasn't even thinking about a, a throne. Like, I saw a throne on the set about a week ago, but it didn't occur to me that it's part of, and I didn't see casters on it. You know, because I, you, the, in a perfect world, they'd have casters, and you'd push, wheel me out there, and I'd never have to walk <laughs> again, you know? But I forgot about the throne can't spend too much time in that throne. You get carried away with yourself. 
Monday I need that purple chair back and I need a, a, um, a pencil skirt or a DVF, something flatten me a wig, <laughs> and throw some chapstick on. Okay, okay. Let's not get carried away. Okay. Right now we're the best thing going. By midnight, I'll be telling everybody in the restaurant, I love you, man. <laughs> Oh, wrong table. <laughs> I mean, the bathroom attendant. <laughs> right. My husband came out during the commercial break and put his fist through the back of the cake. You didn't see that part. Then he tried to smush it in my face, only I had more segments to go. She couldn't be my nanny. Oh, did you see the nanny? Who's nanny? The, the uh, eye candy. She's oh, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the stuff Lifetime movies are made of. Show them the nanny. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? How you doing? Summer fade. Gorge. Come yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> gorgeous. Beautiful figure. Beautiful skin. A beautiful way of speaking. And mm. <clears throat> Nope. My nanny's got to look like Mildred. <laughs> and even that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how that story ends. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this would have been too much, correct? <laughs> Maybe I'll take off all this and put on my regular outfit, but wear this to the restaurant. No. Why? No. No. Just go out. We'll get you some. Do you remember else. that time when we were traveling and you showed up at the airport and I had my tiara and on? I sat with another game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> So if you'd like people she to sit not with, with you, me. you're not wearing that. Give me. Well, no, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. No, Wig, you sat with me with my tiara yes. on. And DJ Booth sat with mm -hmm. us. And my husband, for my what? husband and my son, when they see me with a tiara, it's just another day at our house. It's so funny. They don't even flinch. They don't even flinch. You are so girly. I love it. Thank you. Let's go to, are we ready for this picture yet? Brendan said that he was going to knock. Okay. All right, I love you for not just watching the after show, but thank you for watching this show. Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. I just had some shrimp cocktails. What? <laughs> oh, right, because we have full, full blown champagne. There's a, there's a full spread. I had no idea, catered on the floor for staff. Like snacks. And there's so much vouve in here that, yeah, it's vouvelicious. All right, so I have to go to a party. But without you, this couldn't happen. Thank you. I will eat and drink double for you, and we'll talk on Monday where it's going to be business as usual. You'll get back to reading me, and I'll get back to eye-rolling you. <laughs> I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Monday. Hi. <laughs> I just got here. It's cold. It's like 20 degrees in New York. It's uh, five minutes to eight, and in two hours we have a live show to do. <laughs> I'm one traffic jam away from total disaster. <laughs> 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 just one, just one accident in the tunnel. <gasps> Bruce. Oh my God. Terrible, right? Right? There was so much that happened over the weekend. Brian Williams. Temporarily stepped down. Rosie's getting divorced and quitting. Bruce. Oh, gee. Let me see what I'm gonna wear today. Good morning. Good morning. What are we wearing? Oh, what are we not? Well, if I'll just take a few options. I feel good about myself. Okay. But I was thinking um, flat front. Um, a pair of slacks grazing at my pants? ankle with uh, a flat. Yeah. Um, I think we sent them out for cleaning. I'll double check. Okay. Um, we yeah. have more than just one pair, though, right? Of something. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the luckiest girl in the world. You are. With That's backups cool. of everything. It's too early. Look, we're here before everyone. I think the boys are. Fire up the, pairs. Fire up the makeup room. Did you watch the Grammys? I did actually. I was quite entertained. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it was a little melancholy, but... Mm -mm. What was melancholy? The only time I walked out of the room, I think, was when that woman with that blonde triangle on her head, Sia, I like oh, her song, but <laughs> really... Was that morning, the, the dancing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are we talking about? We're talking about what wig I'm wearing today. Well, what are we wearing first? <clears throat> Something with sleeves? Yeah. What color? 
Okay. <laughs> You're too far along. <laughs> well, I don't know. Keep it, maybe, keep it a little short. Beyonce's hair looked really pretty. It was beautiful. I thought about you. Yes, it was very I pretty. I thought about Beyonce. you. She was one of my favorite. Long and beachy. Yep. I love Nikki's hair. Yes, she looked very pretty. She looked very pretty on the red carpet, too. I did not. Nice. Uh, yeah, I know Beyonce was taking us to church, but there was a point in the song, I'm like, okay, when's she going to tear away and turn it out? Well, I didn't see the performance. I never... just watched the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. well, I, all right, I only saw an hour of the Grammys. But <laughs> the, the hour that I saw, I really enjoyed. What do you think about Lady Gaga? I thought she looked great. I did. Normal? She, yes. What did I see with her? She looked normal. What about Katy Perry? I can't think. I didn't like Taylor Swift on the red carpet. I, I didn't did. Like, I didn't like her dress. Um, well, too I thought much, too much material for you, man. Okay. Okay. It, it looked it looked heavy, and there was a lot of material, and I didn't get the pink nod down at the feet and whatnot. And the no, shoes. even Imani, uh, Mar Armani Privé can make a mistake. I did not like um, Iggy Azalea, head to toe. Done. I mean, not done with her. I like her, but I just I didn't like that that braid wreath thing going on uh -huh. and also if you're going to do it straighten it or intentionally turn it to the side did you notice it wasn't even <laughs> and um uh, and i didn't like her dress it's all that illusion mesh and cutouts i know it was a marnie privé and it cost five thousand dollars but what am i doing i have to eat breakfast good morning good morning <laughs> <laughs> all right so this is pretty much the normal routine. I like to bring in a few snacks. I made um, chicken, and rice, all day in the crock pot yesterday with um, zucchini, broccoli, and red pepper. And I, and I like all my food pushed together. I know that doesn't look good, but it's all the food <laughs> pushed together. And I'll douse it in hot sauce and then follow it up with an apple pear. Nuts are always good. Always good. So um, we start hair and makeup in, I don't know, we have a good two hours before the show. We've got time. <laughs> no, we start hair and makeup um, in about a half hour come back. Okay. What am I wearing? We've got two hours. Don't worry. <laughs> We've done this a thousand times. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. How are you? Good morning, Talia. <laughs> so we have our very first fashion panel. It's very exciting. I'm very excited. Oh, my God. First of all, the rehearsal went really good just now. And it's going to be, it's already long. Yes. So I'm just like. I don't know how to control it, but there's so much to talk about. And Just, everybody's opinionated. And everyone, and everyone is yep. very opinionated. All right, let's get right to it. Everyone's talking about Taylor Swift. I didn't like her dress. Okay. You didn't? Okay. No. She and, looked like a lot of material. Okay. Not that it should have been that short, but I don't know. And I didn't care for the shoes with it. Did you like the matchy-matchy? With the earrings, the jewelry? Uh, no, but... Wardrobe would like that. Mentor is a matchy matchy. Okay. The pop of color, no, no. that was cool in the shoes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, so that's Taylor Swift. Okay. Um, but you're prompting Robert. What did you think? You can. Do you prefer to do your comment after or before everyone? I I don't I don't mind doing it before okay. because. I just don't. All okay, right. it's good that you do it before also. This way you can, if they are going on too long, you can keep the train moving. Yes. So right. if you see prompter, we've got to move on to the next person. It means move on to the okay. next person. I like Gwen Stefani. What's everyone saying? Everyone's saying Gwen Stefani is the best dress. Really? <laughs> Talia's saying Gwen Stefani is the best dress. I mean, no, she, like it. she looks fantastic. Okay, and what... And you love the jumpsuit look. You just rocked it on the thousandth show. Exactly. Yeah, I love a jumpsuit. I love... How the bottom is tapered, and um, I like the the gathering in the middle. Mm -hmm. It looks like this will be long enough even for my long legs, and I love the illusion spider web. Okay. And they say like it looks like Gwen Stefani, but a grown up and appropriate, great looking Gwen Stefani. Exactly. Okay. All right. So next up is Katy Perry. I liked her red carpet dress. You liked it. Well, why shouldn't I? 
Well, some people like it, some people don't. Some well, people I like it. The earrings, everything was just too much. Let me but say. Well, you asked about the dress. You didn't ask about the accessories. Okay, let me so look. let's show her. The earrings are too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so that one's for Katrina, what'd you think? All right, next up, everyone's talking about her, Kim it's Kardashian. Sure. This was the back, by the um, way. But I liked it. It looks like a bathroom. Yeah, so, yes, yes, you know I love a robe. Someone said it's Joan Collins from Dynasty. Oh, Come to the red carpet. fabulous. Right. Dare I say, oh she God. might be my best dress on the red really? carpet. Really? Perfect. Uh, well, I'll tell you why. This is very practical. After the Grammys, you use it as a robe and invite friends over. <laughs> All right, perfect. Do you like her new shorter haircut that she revealed over the weekend? Yeah. Okay. Did you see her and Kanye kissing on the red carpet? No. And he oh. was grabbing her like he did Amber All right. back in the day. Mm -hmm. All right, but that one's for Bevy. All right, and last we have Madonna. Givenchy. Uh, even Givenchy gets it wrong. Okay, so <laughs> everyone's unanimous. Everyone hates. Why, it. Wendy? She's a rock star. Does this not fit her mode? Um, her, uh, her brand. You know, when, when she turns around and you see her butt cheeks, like, like really. Right. Yes, <laughs> work it, 56. Uh, well, for 56, it's terrific, but <laughs> I think that it's time to. Hang Put it up. away at certain points. Right. Okay. She can change into that maybe for one performance at a Madonna concert. Right. When her performance was good, and we'll talk about that in Hot Topics. All right. She and was that one of one? the bright spots of the night. Yeah. Night, there were a lot of good yeah. performances. I wasn't disappointed by the whole show. Really? Right. I thought it was kind of. Even though I only yeah. watched an hour. Of Robert, it. Katrina, Bevy, thanks for being here. For more info on our Palinos panelists, log on to wendyshow.com. All right. Okay, Wendy, and then later in the show we have a pop quiz. Perfect. Who won the Grammy last night for Best New Artist? Was it Sam Smith, Iggy Azalea, or oh. Ariana Grande? Oh, I was going to say, a man I never heard of, Beck. No, he won the Best Sam. Album Award, and then Kanye rushed the stage. We're going to talk about that and Hot Topics, too. Hi, boss. Good morning. Hi, we're walking. You know my hormones so well. Right after the meltdown, I caught my period. <laughs> yeah, look at me. Right after? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I know I have a tick. Everyone does. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Johnny. Now, good morning, David. Now I go over the beats of hot topics, the order of the stories and things like that. And then I'll go get dressed. No pressure. We've got like an hour and 10 minutes. Oh, by the way, we have about seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the time in the world. I'm saying we've, we've done more with less. <laughs> oh, nine minutes. For a show that's on time, why is every clock wrong? We have to go by bread. <laughs> yeah, we have to go by uh, by. By the way, happy Halloween. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. This is my inner prince. <laughs> by the way, um, Prince just came out of nowhere last night, right? Well, they knew he was going to be there. They did know? The way he kind of strutted out was fantastic. Was, you know. Well, here I am. I'm wearing crinoline. Didn't you say you were going to fluff the crinoline? I didn't. Well, I thought you said you were. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do it. We still have time. I know. No, I'm trying to get out there earlier just to show I <laughs> actually care about where I am. I'm tired of running out of breath down the hall. <laughs> oh boy. I start um I start my training later on today. Eight minutes later. Eight minutes. Plenty of time. Wow. Ooh, this is special. What shoes am I wearing? Oh, your obsession with patent leather. I'm obsessed with it? I'm not a big patent leather person. I don't buy leather. I used to think that I was a patent leather person. I'm not. Well, who buys it? It was here before I got here. <laughs> <laughs> I buy it. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy. Patent leather message. Manolos. No, but that's almost too, yeah. Um, is this an expensive dress? Not particularly. Well, you Actually, know, no, a, a, I was supposed to wear it one day last week and I busted out the zipper. I don't know if you call me telling the story. We sent it to get a stronger zipper. <laughs> industrial zipper. Yes. Nothing like an industrial zipper. 
big for the bed. Oh no. This belt doesn't fit. My waist is too small. Yes. Oh. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. That's plenty of time. You change clothes. That's plenty of time <laughs> to change clothes and deliver an international show. Mmm, <laughs> that's a good one. Mm. We got to get over this uh, winter thing. I swear. I'm trying my best to twerk and be cheerful. It is starting to wear on me, though. You know what I'm saying? The whole winter thing. You know? Me too. Yeah. It's cold and it's dark and snowy. And you blamed me for having a meltdown. I'm sure many of you have had meltdowns <laughs> on the after, on the the after back, show so. before. Oh yeah, zhuzhin in the back, so it looks like I'm wearing a back Six like you have minutes a butt. Six, yes. minutes. Six minutes, that's plenty of time. <laughs> Woo! Look, look. <laughs> ew, ew. <laughs> Wait, hold on. At your ring? No, I have to get... Gum. Hold on, yo. Yeah. Oh my god. My heart's starting to race. I'm starting to get into my Sasha Fierce mode. <laughs> five minutes later, five minutes! Yeah, that's plenty of time. Ugh, what a mess. Alright, so now what I do, I'm all dressed and put together. Uh, I will go out. Wait, I don't want to sit. I don't want to smush my new butt. Um, I will go out uh, there and they'll give me last, more last minute briefing um, in that little place I like to pray. Um, he'll brush my hair more. He'll fluff my dress more. My husband and I will say our morning prayer, which we do as a ritual. We close the curtains and we say our morning prayer. And then I go out and stand on the star and then that man says, and here's Wendy, and I go, ta-da. So I'm not going to do an after show because you've got all the before show today. And after t um, this show today, I really do have to race out of here and race across town. I'm involved in a very four important project. Four minutes. You'll find out about later in March. So we need you guys up on your feet, hooting and howling, waving your arms as if you've all just won Powerball! Powerball! One, two, three! Powerball! Perfect! You have a seat, lots of energy. So when Wendy comes out here, she gives you guys a nice big, how you doing, with the hands. So we're gonna get a great shot of all of you giving her a nice big how you doing hands back. So on the count of three, how you doing the hands? Here we go. One, two, three. How you doing? Well, I am fantastic. That was perfect. Then we go right into juicy, juicy hot topic. We love you guys, our audience, to be a part of the show, and I guarantee it makes for it a better time. Also, you know we are live. These cameras are on you guys the entire time. Oh, it's great to see the show, and better to see yourselves on the show. The best way to get on the show is give us your biggest, most beautiful reaction. Your big smile, your big moves, your big eyes. The bigger and better your reaction, the more chances you'll get on. If you know the cameras are on you, act cool. Do not wave to yourself, do not shout yourselves out. We're going live in less than one. 